Hello, everyone. My name is Henry Wang. I'm a PhD student at MIT working on computer architecture and efficient machine learning. I'm very glad to introduce our work on Spartan, efficient sparse attention architecture with cascade token and head pruning. As we know, NLP techniques have been widely used in many real world applications, ranging from chatbots to machine translation. Their impressive performance comes at the cost of low efficiency, as the model size and computation are both increasing exponentially. Due to the end of Moore's law, general processors cannot provide sufficient computing power. Therefore, specialized NLP algorithm and hardware co-design is critical to solve this mismatch. Here is the outline of this presentation, and we start with a quick overview of our core approaches. The first approach is cascade token and head pruning. The intuition is that human languages have high redundancy, so it is desirable to find useless information and remove their computations. Here we show an example. The task is to classify whether this film review is positive or negative. The input to the first BERT layer contains all 11 tokens and eight heads. After the first layer, we identify unimportant tokens and heads and remove them. Therefore, the second layer only need to process a shorter sentence with less heads. Similarly, more non-essential heads and tokens are removed. And the last layer only has two tokens and four heads. If I only show these two words to you, are you able to determine whether it is positive? I believe you can. That's the idea of removing redundancy. In order to support the pruning, we also design a high partisan top key engine to select top several important tokens and heads and remove others. We also propose progressive quantization. The core idea is to reduce DRAM access by eagerly fetching MSCs and lazily fetching LSBs. Here is an analogy. For this sentence, the full information is in the DRAM, and we only fetch part of the information to entry buffers. If the confidence about the sentence is high, then we do not need to fetch LSBs. Otherwise, if the confidence is low, meaning the information is not enough to get a meaningful results, then we need to fetch LSBs. That's the quick overview. As background, the attention mechanism is widely used in recent NLP models. Those models can be categorized into two classes, discriminative and generative. Discriminative models such as BERT only contain one summarization stage. Generative models contain summarization stage and also generation stage. For the summarization stage, the input tokens are firstly encoded in embedding vectors and fed to a multi-block model. Inside each block, we first have fully connected layers to compute the query, key, and value vectors. Then QQB vectors are processed by an attention layer. Then an FFN layer containing two FCs and one activation layer is appended. Attention has three steps, which we will introduce in detail later. An important point is that in the summarization stage, QKV are all 2D matrices. After multiple blocks, the discriminative model such as BERT we will append the classifier and get final results. Instead, the generative model such as GP2 applies a language model head to generate a new token. The new token is fed to the generation stage. One iteration in the generation stage is similar to summarization. The biggest difference is that the query is one single vector. KV are reused from summarization stage, so KV are still matrices. Another token is generated in the last layer. Multiple iterations generate multiple tokens. Usually we also call a block here as one layer for the NLP model. Now we have a look at the details in the attention layer. In the summarization stage, the QKV are matrices. In this example, we have 11 tokens. The QKV are firstly chunked to multiple heads. Each head typically has feature length at 64. In each head, the query is multiplied with the transpose of the key matrix and generate an attention score matrix. The intuition is that each token is assessing the relevance or importance of all other tokens to itself. So we get a 11 by 11 attention score matrix. Then a row-wise softmax is applied. Since each row sums to one, we call this matrix attention probability matrix. After that, we compute attention probability times the value matrix and get the output of one head. Similarly, we do the same process for all the heads and concatenate the results along the feature dimension. Attention in the generation stage is different because the query is one single vector. Therefore, all computations in the generation stage are vector matrix modifications, which are memory bounded. 
we again compute all heads and concatenate the results together. One important point is that attention is different from convolution or empty layers because query key values are activations, not trainable weights. We profile the GP2 latency on different CPUs and GPUs. We find that attention takes over 50% of the overall latency, although its computation only accounts for less than 10%. Inside attention, the matrix modification only takes 27% latency. Other memory operations, such as head sleep and transpose, take over 70% latency, which makes attention very inefficient. Therefore, in order to accelerate attention, we propose Spartan, an algorithm hardware co-design. We leverage pruning and quantization opportunities to reduce computation and memory access, and design specialized hardware to accelerate the complex data movements. We first introduced Spartan's algorithmic optimizations, starting with cascade token and head pruning. As we know, the output of one attention layer will be processed to obtain next layer's QKV matrices. Viewed from a higher level, the QKV input of layer 1 goes through attention, FFN, and the QKV FC, and get the QKV inputs for layer 2. Layer 2 outputs further generate the QKV of layer 3. During this process, the number of tokens and heads are the same. However, not all tokens and heads are created equal. There are opportunities to find an important token has in front layer and remove them in later layers. In order to do this, we need to use an indicator called important score to tell us which token and has are unimportant and prune them away like this. This corresponds to removing tokens and has in the previous example. Similarly, for the remaining token and has, we can again evaluate their importance after layer two and prune them away, which corresponds to the remaining two tokens and four heads in the example sentence. During this process, the prune token and heads will never be used to all the following layers. Thus, it is called the cascade. It helps us to reduce the computation and memory access because we only need to fetch and process remaining tokens and heads. Note that token and head pruning is fundamentally different from weight pruning because the QKV are all activations, not weights, and the prune tokens and heads are input dependent. Now the question becomes, how can we find those unimportant tokens? Recall that attention probability can be considered as the importance of each token to other tokens. Therefore, if one column of this attention probability matrix has very small magnitude, then that means the corresponding token is not important to all the tokens. Here we have a look at a real attention probability matrix. We maintain an important score for each token and accumulate the attention probabilities by column to the important scores. Then we can get top key largest scores and remove those tokens with more important scores. Pruning ratio is a predefined hyperparameter here. The important scores can be accumulated across heads and layers to make it more reliable. Similarly, we also need to find unimportant heads. Here, the indicator is the magnitude of the head outputs. If the magnitude is small, then it's also likely to be less impactful to following layers. Therefore, we also maintain an important score for each head and accumulate attention output magnitude to the scores. The heads with high score will be remained. The head important scores can also be accumulated across layers. Then we come to the local value pruning. In the previous cascade token pruning and head pruning, we find unimportant token heads in current layer and prune them in the next layer. In local value pruning, it is different because we find unimportant value vectors in current layer and prune them instantly in the current layer. We directly rank the attention probabilities. For example, here, if we find the magnitude for these three positions are very small, then we don't need to fetch corresponding value vectors because zero times anything gives zero. This process can only be applied to generation stage because in summarization, the near zero probabilities have different locations in different rows. We also propose progressive quantization. Recall that the generation stage is memory bounded. So one natural idea is to statically quantize the key and value matrices to reduce zero access. Here, we further propose progressive quantization to trade more computations to less zero access. Specifically, we first separate each element in the key to LSD and MSD parts. We firstly only fetch MSD of all key vectors to entry buffers and compute attention probabilities. Then we check the error of the probabilities. If it is low, then MSD are informative enough 
and no need to fetch LSD. Otherwise, if the tension probability has high error, we have to fetch more information, which is LSD from DRAM to onto buffers, concatenate them with MSD, and compute again. In one word, we eagerly fetch MSD, lazily fetch LSD, thus reduce the average bitwidth of all samples. The cost is sometimes we need to do recommutation of attention. Then the question is, how can we check whether the attention error is high or not? In the plot here, each red dot is an input sentence. We find a phenomenon that the larger the max attention probability, the smaller the attention error. For example, the point in the yellow circle has a flat attention probability distribution. Then the max of them is small and the attention error is large. On the contrary, the point in the green circle has dominating attention probability, which is very large. So the attention error is small. Therefore, during computation, we can check whether the maximum attention probability is larger than a threshold. If so, we don't need to fetch LSD. Then we come to the hardware support for the algorithmic optimizations. In the three pruning techniques, they all contain a top key operation to find important tokens, heads, or values. Therefore, we design a specialized high partisan top key engine to support this process. Here we show an example. Find top four elements from this input array. One solution is that to firstly find the fourth largest element, which is five, and then use it to filter the inputs to get results. In order to do this, we firstly use a FIFO to buffer the array and use a quick select module to find the fourth largest element, which is number five. We then compile the input array with five and preserve those elements larger than five or equal to five. Merge them together and use the zero eliminator to remove zeros and get final results. For the quick select module, we use a random pivot based method. We first select random pivot, which is two here, and then use a pivot to partition the array to smaller ones on the left and larger ones on the right. Since the length of the right array is larger than four, we still need to find the fourth largest from it. Then we select random pivot six and partition again. This time, the right side only has two elements. So it goes to the left side and find the largest element in it. Again, we select random pivot four and partition. The right side has only one element, so it is easy to find the largest from it, which is five. The quick select module has 16 smaller comparators and 16 larger comparators, so it can perform the array partition in high partisan. Finally, we also design a dedicated accelerator to support all the techniques above. Here is the overview of the architecture. We will briefly go through each module. Firstly, an accumulator stores and accumulates the token importance scores. We use a top key engine to select key vectors to fetch and send the IDs of the key vectors to a QKV fetcher. The fetcher then sends the addresses through a crossbar to increase the HBM bandwidth utilization. The HBM picks addresses and sends data through another crossbar to keep the correct data order. A bitwise converter converts all data to uniform 12 bits on chip. The keys are stored in an SRAM for reuse in the summarization stage. And then we compute the query times key and accumulate results with an adder tree. Then a softmax module computes the tension probabilities. And the progressive quantization module here checks the maximum attention probability and determine whether to fetch LSD and recompute. If no need to recompute or after recomputation, we get a tension probability and perform local value pruning with the top key engine. The required value vectors are fetched from DRAM to onto buffers and then compute which sum of the value vectors. In the meantime, we also accumulate attention probabilities to the token important score accumulator and accumulate height magnitude to the height important score accumulator. That's the hardware architecture for Spartan. Then we come to the Spartan evaluation. We implemented and synthesized the architecture with TSMC 40 nanometer technology. Spartan has 18.7 millimeter square area and 8.3 watt power. It consists of 1024 multipliers, 392 kilobytes SRAM, and 16 channel HDM2. Each channel provides 32 gigabytes per second bandwidth. The performance on summarization stage is 1.6 teflops per second and 0.43 teflops per second for the generation stage. The query times key module and the tension probability times V module takes a major on-chip area. 
The power of attention and probability times V module is smaller than query times key module because the local value pruning removes part of the V vectors. We extensively evaluated Spartan performance with 30 benchmarks, including BERT based, BERT large, GB2 small, and GB2 medium. The tasks include discriminative glue and squat, as well as generative language models on four popular datasets. For pruning results, one important point is that the pruning ratio is highly dependent on sentence length. For example, for long sentences containing 1,000 tokens in GV2 benchmark, they have high redundancy, so we can prune over 70% tokens. But for short sentences with only 12 tokens in COLA, only 15% tokens can be pruned. Under the same performance on 30 benchmarks average, we can prune away 35% tokens and prune away 10% tests. The effective bit width of progressive quantization is 7.8 bits. Local value pruning prunes away 63% of values. We compare the latency and energy with general purpose CPUs and GPUs. Over server level CPUs and GPUs, we can have 100 to 300 speed up and over 1000 better energy efficiency. Over edge devices such as Nano GPU and Raspberry Pi, we have more than 1000 speed up and up to 1.9 thousand energy savings. We also compare Spartan with state-of-the-art attention accelerators. A3 is an ASIC design with support for local key and value pruning. We have 1.6x speed up and 1.4x energy saving. MNFast is an IPJ design with local value pruning support, and we can have over 3x speed up and energy savings. We also break down the speed up of Spartan on GP2 models over GPU. With specialized data paths, we can achieve 22.1x speed up. All pruning techniques together bring another 3.4x. The progress of quantization further brings 2.8x speed up. Here we show several more examples of token pruning. The task is assume sentiment classification with BERT. After one round of token pruning, many unimportant tokens are removed, such as I, M, that, some of. Then another round of pruning removes more tokens and remain sure, remember, admire, resolve, confusion. So it is still obvious that the sentiment is positive. Another example is language modeling with GP2. The first round again removes redundant tokens. And after the second round, the remaining tokens are do translate into. So the model can still generate a reasonable token, which is English. Finally, we also experiment on software hardware co-design by using hardware aware transformer NOS framework to search a most suitable NLP model for Spartan. Here, the x-axis is the Spartan latency and y-axis is the blue score. Yellow and blue lines are the vanilla general models. With HAT NAS framework, the co-designed model can have better accuracy latency trade-offs and has 1.9x speed up under similar accuracy. We also show the competition breakdown for vanilla model and our specialized model in terms of FC part and attention part. We can see that the specialized model has significantly less FC computations, but a little bit more attention computation. It reflects that the Spartan accelerator is good at attention layers, so the HAT framework can allocate more attention to the model and reduces overall computations. Finally, as conclusion, we propose Spartan accelerator to push the frontier of green AI and tiny AI. Spartan accelerates NLP by removing redundancy in human languages with cascade token and head pruning, local value pruning, and progressive quantization. It is also equipped with a high parallelism talking engine and specialized data paths and operators to improve the efficiency. For more information, please check our website at spartan.mit.edu. Thank you for listening and welcome to the live Q&A session on Monday, March 1st, 1040 Eastern Time. Thank you.